do it. <laughs> Dude, my muscles were about to give out. It's so fucking heavy. That is area though. Bear is good! Bear is good! Bear is good! What's going on everybody? Welcome to episode 8 of the Beer Chasers. So in the last episode, John and I were down at the Sanford Homebrew Shop picking up some grains for a White Slip Honor Hefeweizen clone, and today we're going to brew that batch. But before we did, I wanted to walk you through my new all-grain setup. So the last time we talked about home brewing, it was kind of at the entry-level extract brewer for a couple hundred bucks. This is taking that next step in getting into all-grains. So I'm going to show you the equipment I bought, how much it costs, and some of the whys behind what I got. So stick around, check it out. First up in the equipment list, sanitation and cleaning products. Considering that beer is just really controlling bacteria, it's very important that you start with a clean and sanitized brew setup. In this case, we're going to use a product called Be Bright, which is very commonly found at your local homebrew shop. It's an oxygen-based cleaner such as OxyClean, and you can find an 8-ounce jug of it for about 2 bucks. An 8-ounce jug should be good enough for at least one brew, if not two. Once your homebrew equipment is clean, it's time to sanitize. The go-to sanitizer in the homebrew world is a product called StarSan. It's an acid-based sanitizer that doesn't impart any off flavors in your beer. For $16.99 you can pick up a 32 ounce jug, which should last you a good year to year and a half if you're doing regular home brewing. So now that we clean and sanitize our equipment, it's time to heat up some water for our brew. For the burner, I picked up a Bayou Classic 55,000 BTU propane gas single burner. The burner cost $50, and it was definitely in the middle of the road kind of purchase. There were some more expensive and some a little cheaper, but what drew me to this one is that it had a 16 inch surface area. 16 inches was definitely large enough to brew a 5 gallon batch, and would even be large enough for me to upgrade to a 10 gallon batch in the future. The pot I purchased was a King Cooker 30 quart pot. In the philosophy of doing things right the first time, I went ahead and got the stainless steel over the aluminum. The pot cost 90 bucks, but it did include a lid, a lifting rack, a hook and deep fry thermometer if I ever wanted to do uh, turkey frying or anything like that. And finally you need a propane tank to hook up to the cooker for your fuel source. You can purchase these pretty much anywhere and they're about 35 bucks. Up next is the mash tun. While you can find mash tuns that are pre-assembled, it's much cheaper to build one yourself. The mash tun I created starts with a 10 gallon cooler, which I bought for $45. At the bottom of the cooler, I replaced the plastic spigot with a $35 stainless steel ball valve. In the bottom of the mash tun cooler, I added a false bottom. That's the dome-shaped object with all of the holes in it. The false bottom is stainless steel and cost $35. I also purchased a connecting tube that connected the ball valve to the false bottom. The connecting tube and its associated stainless steel parts cost me $12. Next up on the equipment list are buckets. I went ahead and purchased two buckets for my homebrew setup. This is because I'm going to use both buckets during the brew process. Whether I'm using them in an immersion chiller, whether I'm fermenting, or whether I'm bottling, having two buckets is definitely going to come in handy. The buckets I purchased are 6.5 gallons, and they come in multiple configurations. For the most flexibility, I went ahead and bought the buckets with the spigots and lids that had holes in them. You can purchase the buckets and lids with this configuration for $16 each, so it cost me $32 total. So now we're moving on to the immersion chillers. Because we live in Florida, I purchased two immersion chillers so I could use one as a pre-chiller. For the pre-chiller, I purchased a 25-foot stainless steel immersion coil. The cost was $55. For the second immersion chiller, I purchased a 50-foot stainless steel immersion coil. This one cost $75 for a grand total of $130 for both. Worth noting is that both chillers came with a garden hose adapter as well as six feet of tubing for use with the chillers. So up next in the equipment list, is a fermentation setup. For fermentation purposes, I picked up a six gallon plastic better bottle, which cost me 28 bucks. Glass is the preferred method for fermentation, however these plastic bottles these days are just as good. Plus, if being a new brewer, I might be a little clumsy and plastic will be a little more forgiving. I also picked up a thermometer for the carboy for three bucks. This will allow me to see at a glance the temperature of the beer as it ferments. To seal the carboy during fermentation, you're gonna need a stopper. These cost about two dollars. At the beginning of fermentation, when the beer is fermenting, it's going to put off a lot of carbon dioxide which needs to escape. For this you're going to need an airlock. There's multiple kinds of airlocks, I just went ahead and picked up the three piece which was recommended by the Sanford Homebrew Shop guys, and it cost $3. And finally, I picked up a plastic carboy handle for $10. Definitely more of a convenience item, but it's going to come in handy when it's time to move the carboy. Next up, the bottling equipment. So obviously the first thing when it comes to bottling is you're going to need some bottles. 
The cheapest way to do this is to save and reuse bottles that you've bought from the store. In case you do need bottles, you can pick these up. The bottles cost about 13 bucks for a case, so it's going to set you back about 26 bucks for a 5 gallon batch. So now that you have your bottles, you're going to need some caps. Caps are relatively inexpensive and you should be able to get 100 caps for 4 to 5 dollars. The way you'll put the caps onto the bottles is by using a capper. I picked this one up for 15 dollars. While it could be considered a convenience item, I went in and picked up a drying rack for $27.50. The drying rack holds 45 bottles, and the big draw for me was that it took up a lot less counter space using this tree method than just putting them on my counter. To transfer the beer from the carboy into the bottling bucket, I picked up an auto siphon. The auto siphon cost $13 and is definitely worth its weight in gold. For $3, I picked up a siphon clip that will allow me to attach the siphon to the top of the carboy. The clip is another one of those convenience items, but it's definitely worth the $3 to free up one of my hands during the transfer process. I picked up a bottling wand for $8. The bottling wand makes it easier to transfer the beer from the buckets into the bottles, plus it helps reduce aeration. You're going to need to add priming sugar to your beer to create carbonation. We went ahead and purchased corn sugar, and it's about a dollar a pound. One of these should last you three to four brews, if not more. Next up, the refrigeration setup. Due to the high temperatures in Florida, it makes it very difficult to ferment beers that require lower fermenting temperatures. To combat this, I bought a GE 7 cubic foot chest freezer, which cost $200. With 7 cubic feet, I'm able to fit 2 carboys in this freezer. Since freezers are meant to keep the temperature below 32 degrees, you need a way to regulate the temperature within the freezer. For this, I picked up a Johnson Freezer Temperature Control Unit, and it cost $55. And finally, we have some miscellaneous parts. To assist with transferring liquids back and forth, I picked up a 12-inch funnel which included a strainer for $10. In the event I brewed a recipe that included some thick adjuncts, I went ahead and picked up a stainless steel mesh strainer, which cost $15. For some recipes, you're going to need to create a yeast starter. For this purpose, I picked up a 2,000 milliliter flask, and it cost $25. To figure out exactly how much alcohol is in your beer, you're going to need a hydrometer and a test tube. The set costs about $12. When you need to sanitize something quickly, it's great to have a spray bottle full of star sand on hand ready to go. You can pick up spray bottles for $1 to $2. During the brew process, there are multiple times when you'll need to take the temperature. I picked up a 12 inch thermometer, which is plenty long enough, for $15. When you're brewing beer, you're working with a lot of hoses and tubes, and you need a way to clamp these down. The clamps are $1 a piece, and you're going to pick up 5 or 6, so the cost will be about 6 bucks. To stir the beer ingredients around, you're going to need a long paddle. I picked up a 24 inch paddle for $5. Since some of the brew equipment has some hard to reach spots, you'll need to purchase a couple different brushes to assist with cleaning. First is a brush that will assist with cleaning your bottles. You can pick one of these up for $4. Next is a brush that will help you clean the carboy. This will cost you $6. And finally, a brush for the airlock. This will cost you $3. Alright, so now that we've reviewed all the equipment, it's time to get a total. For sanitation and cleaning products, we had a total of $19. For the boiling setup, we have a total of $175. To complete the mash tun, it costs $127. For both buckets, including the lids and spigots, it costs $32. For both immersion chillers, the cost was $130. For all of the fermentation equipment, we spent a total of $46. For the bottling equipment itself, we had a total of $70. For the refrigeration setup, we spent a total of $255. For all of the miscellaneous parts, it cost $90. And finally, the cleaning brushes cost $13. This puts the grand total at $960 for the all grain setup. All right, so there you go, that's the new all grain setup. So as you can see, coming in at 960 bucks, it's definitely a little more expensive than your entry level extract kit coming in at two or 300 bucks. But at the end of the day, I have full flexibility, whatever beer I wanna brew, I have good quality equipment that's gonna last a while, and that peace of mind is worth it to me. And I've talked to a ton of home brewers who've all said the same thing. If this is something you're gonna do, do it right, just put some money away, buy some parts little by little over time, and you'll be much happier in the end. You know, we could have chintz. I didn't have to get the uh, chest freezer. I could have gotten an aluminum pot instead of a stainless steel pot. I could have gotten copper instead of stainless steel attachments. But again, at the end of the day, I have everything I need, and that's worth it to me. So with that out of the way, it's time to brew that Weiss Stefaner Hefeweizen clone. All right, so we're about to start the Weiss Stefan clone. And before we did, I wanted to ask John if he could explain a little bit about how we know how much water to use. It's something we didn't touch on last time during the homebrew segment. So uh, take it away. All right, so first thing you need to know is grains are going to absorb some water. So we, we want about six and a half gallons of wort pre-boil, so you got to make that offset. Okay, we've got about 10 pounds of grains, we're going to need 8.8 .8 gallons of water because there's an online calculator you can use for that. And the general rule of thumb is that a pound of grain is going to absorb about a quart of water. So with that, we're using 3.3 gallons just for mashing, 
5.5 gallons for sparging, and in the end we're going to get our 6.5 gallons of pre-boiled wort water, or wort. Alright, like John mentioned, there is an online calculator, hopefully you got all that, but now it's time to start brewing some beer. With the beer in the freezer, that's going to wrap up episode 8 of the Beer Chasers. Check us out next time where we're going to do a blind taste test of five different Hefeweizens and see if we can't pick out which one is which. We're going to rank them from best to worst. The winner is going to get a full review. So until next time, we'll see you later. Beer is good. Beer is good. Beer is good. And stop. Beer is good. Beer is good. Beer is good. Let's go drink some beer.